Hello and welcome to Malmakes. Today we're going to be painting the Commonwealth from Fallout 4. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time-lapse version, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. Now I admit it, this isn't the most beautiful sketch I've ever done, but I kind of did a few different thumbnails like this of different video games trying to figure out what I wanted to do for painting 20, and I ended up settling on this one um, of Fallout 4. So after I had done all of these, I went on and I did it in color, and um, there's a lot of detail in this piece, so it's going to take some time. Um, the first thing I'm going to do for painting is fill in my sky, and then I'm going to start drawing. So I'm not going to do any drawing until my sky is in. So let's get to that. I'm realizing there is one thing I should probably draw in, and that's my horizon line. Now if I didn't put it in, I'm liable to keep going with my sky all the way down, or um, maybe my transition just wouldn't be in the right spot. So I have my T-square, and I'm just going to kind of figure out about where I want this to be. Um, let's go with right there. And just use a chalk pastel pencil to mark that in. That way um, I don't have too much blue or too much white or something and I have a good spot where it can stop. The colors I've mixed up are kind of this light blue, but I put a touch of black in it just so it's slightly gray because in the Commonwealth and in all the Fallout games, everything is just complete devastation, so I don't want any of my colors to be too bright because that just feels really unnatural for the world of Fallout. So I'm just going to add this to the very top here, and then I'm just going to kind of bring it down and feather it here, and then I'm going to move into white and put some white down on the horizon and blend that up into the blue, and kind of go back and forth until I have a good transition between them. With this little bit of blue, I'm realizing I want it to be slightly more of a deeper blue up there. So I just added a touch of it up there, and then I'll just kind of get the extra off my brush, grab a little bit more of my light blue, just so my brush is kind of even, and then I'll just try and blend that in into my transition up here. While this is drying, I thought I'd go over some of the things I use to make sure I have a smooth transition. Um, it's particularly useful for skies, um, for example. Um, sort of any gradient, I'll use a combination of these. I might use one of them, two of them. I might use none of them, based on how I feel my paints are going. But in this application, I used all three, so let's go over those. Number one, the most important thing is probably retarder. Now you can add a drop or two of this to your paint to keep it wet longer. Um, the ratio is something like 90% paint, 10% retarder. You don't want to add too much or it'll stay tacky for a long time. Now I've had this bottle forever, I use it all the time. Um, it's really great to use to keep paints wet. Number two, this one's probably the least important. It's GAC 100. Um, this is the only one I've bought recently and I just tried it on a whim um, just to see if it would help. And I added this to my paints with the retarder. Basically, if it's golden, you can mix it. Pretty much anything. They're a great company. And if you're not sure, you can kind of read the back. Like this says, for slower drying, use golden acrylic glazing liquid or retarder. So it tells you right there, you can mix it with retarder into your paint to help it stay wet longer and to help you brush it on the canvas better. Um, I'm not convinced this does a whole lot for me, so I don't use it all that often. Number three. Now this is another one I've had sitting around and I use this whether I'm doing gradients or anything. Um, this is acrylic flow release and it's kind of weird. It gets all over the stuff and it kind of eats the ink off the bottle. It's kind of weird and kind of gross to touch, but I add a drop or two of this to the water. This does not go in paint, it goes in the water. So when I clean my brush, or if I need to get my brush just slightly wet before I start painting, just very, very little bits of this will get into the brush, and it'll help it brush on the canvas. Now I notice this makes a big difference when I paint. Um, one of the things that happens a lot is when I paint, the texture of the canvas, you can completely see it. You'll get these weird like dimples where the paint hasn't sunk down into that little bit of the canvas. This helps all that. So I just add a drop or two to my water. Um, and that's all I do with that one. I've let the sky dry, so it's time to start drawing in some more details. I have to use a chalk pastel other than white because everything that I'm gonna be painting on is already on white background, so you won't be able to see it at all. But I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing in details and the far away ones I'm gonna draw in more detail. And then the close up ones I'm not gonna draw as much in detail because you know, it might just get erased as I work, and then I'll just add more details the closer I get to the foreground. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my T-square and redraw in my horizon line here. I'm 
Now you can see that I've kind of put a little bit of this darker blue here. I was trying out to see if I liked it and I noticed it was just too blue. So I added a bit more white and black to it so it was a bit more gray and that's going to be my horizon color. So I have my big brush again and um, I'm just going to go ahead and use this color right along the horizon line. So I'm going to start right here and just pull it all the way. So I have a nice straight line up here. And I'm trying to make sure I get rid of the chalk with the paint so I don't have to worry about it later. Another thing is I'm not worried about the chalk I have here. Like there's this hill that's going to be here. I can paint over that. That's going to be okay. Um, in fact, I probably should just to make sure things get nice and smooth. But I'll be able to tell where it is later based on the part down here. Because I'm making this foggy, I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of white to my paintbrush and then just kind of blend this in down here, kind of like I did the sky. In order to make this blend more and look a little bit more like fog, I have a zinc white here, and I'm just going to go ahead and kind of brush this upwards. And the great thing about it is zinc white is transparent, so I'm not actually mixing it with the blue, it's just kind of sitting over the top and just making it lighter. Now I'm taking the same thing but with a little bit of black in it so it's gray, and I'm just going to add a little bit of gray to this. So I'm having some troubles with this darker color. You can kind of see this splotch here when I'm trying to cover it with the zinc white and a little bit right there. Um, and that tends to happen on darker colors and I haven't quite figured out why. Um, I think it's partly the texture of the canvas and you can kind of see that in some of those spaces. I also think it's too dark anyway, so um, I mixed up a lighter color here, and I'm just going to go ahead and go back over this. Um, it's also slightly less blue and more gray, so I'm just going to go ahead and repaint this, fade from the bottom with white again, and then let that dry. I'm going to try this again using kind of this light gray color to bring in some clouds. So I'm just going to kind of fill in some of these guys out here past my horizon. And I'm just using a circle brush and um, a round brush. I'm just kind of going in circles. And then I'm going to go underneath it and then just kind of brush it down into this. And then I'm just going to darken those up. Um, I made my color just a little bit lighter, I mean darker. So I'm just going to use it to kind of darken these clouds up. Just doing the same sort of technique. Now I'm just using some of the zinc white by itself to kind of give these clouds a little bit of highlights. And I'm just kind of all doing it on the left side of these darker ones. I've gone back and forth with my mist colors, and it's finally something I like, so I kind of have these clouds rising out of this valley. The next thing I'm going to do is use my light pastel pencil to go ahead and start blocking some of the things in that got painted over. There's also some things I never drew in the first place, but now that this paint is dry, I can go ahead and do that. I've drawn some more things in, but I figured that I need to fill in this building first so I can put the clouds back in front of it. So I have that same color I used for my horizon, and I'm realizing it's not dark enough, so I'm going to go another shade darker, which I had mixed up for the first time I did the horizon. So I'm going to get some of that on my brush, and that's a lot better. So we're going to go ahead and fill this building in with this color, and then towards the bottom I'm going to get it lighter and go back to my actual horizon color I used. My next object on the skyline is the Concord Water Tower. So I'm just using a dark blue-gray color, and I'm going to go ahead and fill the dark parts of it in with this first, 
And then I'm going to bring in some more white, a lighter blue, kind of this one down here. And then I have some rust color, which is just burnt sienna with a little bit of this blue color. So I'm just going to use all of these to go ahead and try and fill in this water tower. The next closest thing is a little bit of a hill I'm going to put in here. So I just have my darker blue and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of fill this in. And then like before, I'm just going to grab some white and work that up into this hill. Once this ridge is dry, I can use some more of that zinc and then just bring some more clouds in. It'll give it some depth. So it looks like there's things in front of it and behind it. So I'm just using zinc and then I'll use a little bit of titanium white just on the tips of these clouds. For my next layer, I'm painting in some trees using a liquid black and it's kind of a transparent black. It's that shading black I've used in other paintings. Um, that way I can always add a little bit more value to it, make it a little bit darker, but it's also kind of transparent and it's going to look a little bit mist-like. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and use a very thin brush and paint in some trees. Then, like I mentioned, I can go over it with a darker black to kind of just give it a little bit of value and bring some more of these together. Like everything else, well, at least in the background, this is going to get some fog too. So I just have a bit of that zinc white and I'm going to bring that up over these trees. Letting that stand of trees dry, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the church steeple. So I'm going to go ahead and paint it a solid color first, and then I'm going to go ahead and start adding some value to it, just like I did with the water tower. For the steeple, I'm using a bit of a blue-green color, and then for the rest of the church, I'm using a bit more of a brown, but it still has some blue in it. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish filling these in, and then for the openings, I'm going to go ahead and kind of try and recreate this color so I can fill that in there. My next plan is to start filling in some more trees. I was going to put some on this side of the steeple, maybe a few in front, and then just a couple kind of behind all of these buildings before I fill those in. So just like the ones over here, I'm going to use a shading gray first so it's very light, and then I'll bring a little bit of black on top to make just parts of them darker. I'm realizing something about doing these trees. When I did these over here, when I put the fog on top of it, it kind of smeared them a little bit. So I'm waiting on these to really, really dry before I go ahead and do that. Um, in the meantime, I've mixed up kind of this grayish brown color. And um, I was just testing it by using my palette knife on the canvas. But I'm going to go ahead and fill in this hill with it um, just to kind of block in my colors. And I'm waiting on things to dry. And it's something I'll have to do later, so I might as well go ahead and do it now. So I'm just going to go ahead and block this in and some of the other ground that I have. So that's all done. For my next building, I'm just going to go ahead and use a T-square to make sure all my lines are straight. And then I'll start painting it. The building I've put between the red rocket and the church is kind of a reddish color. So I've mixed up kind of this grayish brown red color, and this one's going to be the highlight actually. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that up here on the roof, 
And then I have the same color but with more black and blue, and that's going to be um, the shadow, so the side color. While that building's drying, I'm going to go ahead and use some of my church steeple colors to fill in some stuff here behind these trees, kind of underneath the red rocket cantilever roof. Um, otherwise, it's going to look really strange with these black trees and this white around it. Um, so I'm just going to use the colors I have left here. I'm going to go ahead and kind of redraw in some of these buildings that I've lost from um, doing the mist for the other trees. And then by then, this should be dry and I can go back to working on that. I fixed the lines and you can see I started to fix up the color here. I think it was too saturated and needed more gray to it. It was just like too red because everything should be really muted because it's fallout. So I'm just going to go ahead and refill this building in and then I'll start mixing up some of the paints for the details. The details of the building are basically just pinstripes, so I have a lighter color, so I'm just going to go ahead and paint those in. With pretty much everything, I'm adding some of this mist, so I kind of have to wait for things to dry and then I can put it back down on top of everything. And I'm just trying to make it a bit lighter at the bottom so it's more of the white and then just less and less the further I go up. In the background, I only have like two more things to do. There's two houses here and then there's the Red Rocket gas station. So I'm just gonna mark those in and then because everything else is already done and they're separated, I can go ahead and paint those, let them dry, add the final bit of fog and then move on to my foreground. The colors I'm using for these are kind of some of the things I had left over from the steeple and the water tower. Um, I just made a few of them lighter and darker. So I'm going to go ahead and paint the walls more of this blue color. That's actually the wrong side. This one gets the darker one. And then so this one will be dark, this one will be light, and then this over here will also be dark. And then the roofs are going to be a bit lighter. They're going to be more of kind of this color. And then there's some detail that I'm going to do with a lighter shade. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill these in with all these colors I already have and then add detail. I finished up the houses, but I'm going to add some details. And I'm basically kind of framing in the roof here, just to give it some more detail to itself. And while I'm doing that, I thought I'd talk about why I chose to paint Fallout 4. Um, I played three, gosh, six, seven years ago. Um, I was in college and I bought an Xbox 360. It was someone else's used. And Steven let me borrow Fallout 3. Um, he's like, you know, you've liked 1950 stuff and poodle skirts. He said, you'll love this game. So I played through it and it was, I really enjoyed it. Um, I hadn't really played a sandbox game at the time, I think, maybe. So it was neat to go around and just explore everything. And it was really neat to like, walk into a school building for the first time and see it all abandoned. So I really enjoyed getting to play it and um, I was really excited for 4 to come out, but um, I'm not completely done with the story for 4 because if I keep playing it, I'm going to spoil it for Steven who's doing his, you know, 100% run of Fallout 4. So I kind of took a break and I've been playing the Uncharted series in the meantime, but um, it's always been really fascinating um, to me to see the abandoned things and to see kind of where society went. Um, so with my Fallout 4 painting, I kind of picked some of the more iconic things from Fallout 4, like the Red Rocket gas station, and it's kind of a view of Concord, but it's not 100% there, um, like the distances aren't right and the locations aren't right. But I picked some of the iconic things, like the gas station and the water tower, um, to kind of just place them there and kind of give this nuclear post-apocalyptic feel. So I'm going to go ahead and finish filling in these houses, and then we'll move on to the gas station.
with the gas station, the first thing I'm going to do is refill in this ground space because I have to have that done before I do like the rocket trails that come down and then I can move on to doing the building and the rocket itself. So um, I kind of mixed up this color again, but I made it slightly darker gray. So it's a bit different down here. And then I'm just going to fade it towards white kind of on the edge of this ground space. Now it's feeling like it's lacking a little bit, so I'm just going to take some of the blue colors I have and kind of, I don't know, fill in some rocks or something on this edge. The cantilever roof is actually kind of reddish orange kind of like this building was. So I kind of mixed up a new color. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this in and it kind of leads into the roof here. So I'm just gonna paint the whole thing this color. The cantilever roof has a little bit of an edge to it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint it in. The color I used was the same color I had for the roof. I just added more blue and black to it. So I'm going to give a bit more detail to the rest of this building before I move on. Um, so I'm just going to do a little bit of things like adding a little bit more value to it and maybe some more details. Um, I was going to put some of the red rocket words up here um, and I think this is kind of looking plain so I'm going to give that a bit more detail too like there's an awning and some other things I can add. So I'm just going to go ahead and work on doing some of that. I think the thing that's really bothering me with the truck stop is that it's just not red enough. And I mean, I know I was going to paint the rocket red, but everything else just doesn't feel red enough for the truck stop. So I kind of mixed up a cooler red and you can't really see it here, but you can kind of see it here um, that I'm going to use for everything else and just kind of go back over everything because I'm not happy with it. So I can just go ahead and paint over everything else and just kind of bring some more red tones into this. So I've been working on drawing the actual rocket part, and I didn't like it. I was kind of drawing it like the Washington Monument, and then I looked at some different pictures and I realized it's more Swedish fish shaped, kind of does this. So I'm going to fill it in with this red color. It's this same red right here, and then I have the darker red I can use to bring in the value on the right, the shadows. And I might bring in a little bit of orange for the highlights, or maybe just kind of this pink color. I'm going to see how it looks. One might look too warm. But I'm just going to go ahead and start filling this in. To paint the tails of the rocket, I kind of just went and did the outside first, and then I'm just kind of painting around the circle where it's the negative space. So like here, I'm kind of just going around, and then I'm just kind of filling in these edges. The next thing I'm going to do is redraw in the red rocket name because before I had it but my hand kept going over the chalk so it erased it. So I'm just going to go ahead and redraw that in and then paint it.
The last thing I did is I put some supports behind the letters because when they're stood up on something like this, they need something so they don't topple over. So I just put a few in and then the letters that are missing, because the red part is missing, I just drew it straight through. So I'm gonna let that dry before I go on to more of the foreground stuff. Now I'm just gonna add in some trash because it looks too clean, especially kind of in this area of the red rocket. So I just kind of have a dark bluish gray color and I'm just gonna kind of fill in some heaps of trash. For the last bit of background, I'm just gonna add a little bit more of this mist in front of Red Rocket here. Moving on to the midground, I'm just gonna use some of this plain color I had for over here before and fill this in. There's gonna be a little bit of a hill that sits here. So I'm gonna fill this in and then I'm gonna put a little bit of like dappled light on it with some darker colors. And then of course put some more fog over that. And then after that, some of the other things I have coming up, there's gonna be a pile of rocks here. This hill will need to get kind of that same dappled light and then some more trees. And then there's gonna be of course the top of the vault up here. So filling this in um, is just kind of cleaning up this edge because I didn't want the whole red rocket station to be seen. I kind of wanted it down in this little valley area. So I'm filling that in and then I'm just gonna take a little bit of this black I have put a little bit on my brush, and then just kind of give this some texture. I ran out of my original color and I kind of wanted to make something a bit warmer because it's getting closer to the perspective of the viewer. So I kind of made up this new color and it looks like this. And so this will be the new color for this hill. And you could see down here where I had sampled a few different things to try. So I'm just gonna go ahead and repaint this. Like I said, trying to make sure this line is nice and solid. And then this will get the same treatment as that other hill. While those trees are drying, because they're gonna get a little bit more of the fog, um, I wrote in the concord up here, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in. And I'm kind of using one of these dark blues I had for the stem of the water tower. This is dried, so it's time to start doing some trees over there. And you can see I've marked a couple of them in, and this is gonna be a layering process where I do some trees, a little bit of fog, some trees, less fog. And then I keep bringing that forward until it's just trees with no fog on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill these in. And I don't think I'm gonna draw all of them in in chalk, just some of them in the background, so I start seeing where my layers are gonna go. but I'm gonna start filling all these in and then work my way forwards. And then as it dries, I might move back here and kind of bump back and forth because things will need to dry and they need to dry very well when I'm using this liquid paint. Still waiting on things to dry, so I thought I'd block in the top of the vault here. So I took some time to make sure it was even on both sides and it just has a slight curve. So I'm just going to use kind of this light blue color I have here to start to fill this in. Thank you. 
I'm letting these trees dry, so in the meantime I'm going to go ahead and kind of give a base color to these rocks. And then while that's drying, I'll jump back here and do another row of trees. Even though I blocked in these rocks, they're kind of boring and they need some texture. Now if you're finding your paintings are real flat like this, and you're like, well, you know, there's value in there, they need to have some texture. Kind of like how this kind of has this speckled look. If you remember, I did the stripes first and kind of swooshed the colors back and forth, but then I did kind of the dotted marks for the texture. That really helps. Um, things like the lines going into here for the water tower. Those are things that push your paintings to the next level. So if you're finding they're kind of flat and boring, that's what they need. So I'm going to go ahead and use these same colors and then just kind of work these rocks. I'm going to start from the faraway ones and just kind of give them a solid base coat again because you can see I kind of missed some areas. And then I'll just use my other colors. Maybe I'll throw a little bit of dark, maybe from the bottom of this one. Maybe I'll take a little bit of brown, put a little bit of brown in it. But I'm kind of just going to use those colors to make new shapes and value and bring, um, bring some texture to this, so it'll really help it out. To explain this a bit better, I'm putting the same color over and then grabbing a little bit of white on my brush, and I didn't wash it so it's still kind of this blue color, and then I'm bringing in some highlights. So I'm just grabbing the white, I'm just kind of figuring out where I want the highlights of the rock to go, and just brushing them in. And then in the shadow of the rock on this side, I'm kind of doing the same thing. I probably should have done it when I had my first color. I'm bringing in some highlights out here. Maybe there's some bumps in these rocks. Then I'm taking a little bit of brown and just bringing a little bit of brown in here so there's some different colors and they're not all the same. And brown works really good because the rest of the painting is quite brown. So I did that in the highlight part of the rock. I'll do that in the shadow part of the rock. And at this point I'm washing my brush out because I don't want that light color to contaminate the dark color because otherwise it'll get light and not stay dark. So now I'm picking up some of the dark shadow color and then I'll just bring that back on top of here. Then I might take the shadow color and put a little bit of that up here in this highlights. Next I'm grabbing some black, and then I'll just bring that into the shadows of the rock. So way down here where the other ones are going to overlap. Maybe bring a little bit up into here. And I'm looking to have a bit more of the shadows on the right side of the rock because that's where my shadows go. And then just not as many on the left side where the highlight is. To touch anything up, I might tone down some of my shadows. I might bring in some more highlights. Or even tone some of these whites down. Maybe they're too bright in my opinion. The rocks have dried and I did a few more trees in the meantime, but I'm realizing the rocks look a bit furry and it's kind of bothering me. And I think what needs to happen is the shadows need to get darker, especially on the right side of the rocks, and the highlights need to get lighter. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to use the shading gray I was using for some of these faraway trees, 
and it's just that transparent black I use. And I'm gonna kind of fill in the shadows of the rocks like solid with this stuff. So it brings that whole side of the rock darker and leaves the light side lighter. I still have a few trees left, but over here I'm going to go ahead and start drawing in my fence. Starting to fill in the platform is going to be a bit tricky. Um, I tried drawing in some of the spokes at the top of the vault, but I was having trouble with them. So I decided to move on because I was starting to erase the part of this that I really liked. So I'm going to work on painting that first. Now I'm going to go ahead and take some white and fill in part of this ellipse here because it's going to be yellow and my yellow is slightly transparent. I want to make sure I can see it. So I'll paint it white first, let it dry, then paint the yellow. And then while I'm waiting on it, I could work on filling in the very top middle part here. For the lid, I've mixed up more of this blue, and then I also mixed up a rust color. And my rust color is burnt sienna with some gray, some blue, and then I did the same thing, but with a little bit more red, because on the actual top part of the lid, it's a bit warmer. And then on the side here, where it starts to kind of have this recess, it's a bit more yellow. So I kind of have these two different rust colors going on. So I'm just gonna work on filling those in back and forth until I just have this nice ellipse here filled in. I know this looks a bit messy right now, kind of in here, where this brown is all kind of wavy, but as I paint my next layers, it'll clean up um, on top of that just because it's going to be gone over. So my next color is the blue color, and I made it just a little bit lighter than the color that was there so I could see it. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill this in to clean it up, and then I'm going to take more of this brown color and add some rust on top. This looks like a mess, but I think I finally made something I'm happy with. Um, as you can see, it took me a lot of tries. Every different color was kind of a different try. At some point I erased and started over. Um, so it's kind of hard to explain which lines I'm going to be going with because like this one it's the purple, but this one it's the pink, and this one it's the white. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in black, and I'm just going to use that liquid black so I can make sure I have a nice smooth line.
after putting it in black and erasing my chalk, I'm starting to see where my problems were. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this blue, and I realize this is a lighter color. This is the same light blue that I used in here. So it's okay, it's going to look a bit weird for a while until I start bringing my colors and layers back in. But I want to get rid of this black so it doesn't throw me off later. Um, the outside circle I had painted in is totally fine, I'm okay with that one. But this one needs to go away. So I'll paint this all light blue let it dry, and then try doing the chalk again. But this time, I know where my problems are. So what I did is I took a picture on my phone, and you can see that this is down here. And what I ended up doing is I took it into Photoshop, well I had Steven do it, and put kind of a gear with 12 teeth on it and flatten it using the 3D extruder tool so I could see where this lays. And then we saved it as a JPEG and sent it back to my phone so I could see where the teeth are supposed to go. So that's really helped me out. I've gone ahead and redrawn everything, so now I'm just going to go ahead and re-outline it in black. Now that that's done, I just have to go ahead and fill it in just like I did the center circle. The next thing I need to add is some trash, and so I've drawn in some piles, and I'm just going to use sort of a more greenish brown to fill it in. And we're done! We have the vault entrance looking down on Concord from Fallout 4. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a print, or a poster, or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.